Hi, so I'm a firm believer in something I'm beginning to think of, a jam jar science. That is, you can do some really interesting things in a jam jar. Now, one of the most interesting things kicking around at the moment is graphene. It's um, a thin layer of graphite, and it's very exciting to people because of its unusual properties. Now, I'm particularly interested in it because I'm looking at the electrical conductivity. I'm hoping to make an ink out of it. So what I thought I'd do is give it a go synthesizing some graphene. Now, what you're going to do to do this are seven things. The first is a bit of deionized water, and you can buy that absolutely anywhere. Uh, supermarkets sell it, uh, car stores. The next thing you're going to need is some spirit of salts, which is hydrochloric acid. Uh, you can get that at a do-yourself store. The next thing you're going to need is some drain cleaner. It's 98% uh, concentrated sulfuric acid. Just read the label. Again, you can get it at a hardware store. Uh, you're going to need some hydrogen peroxide. This is 9%. I got this from a local chemist. Uh, you're going to need some um, nitrate of soda. This is a fertilizer. You can get it from a garden center. You're going to need some potassium permanganate. Uh, I got this uh, free, actually. But you can buy this stuff in little brown uh, glass jars down at local chemists. And the next thing you need is some graphite. I got this graphite online because I've been doing quite a bit of work with graphite. Now, making um, graphene is a process that involves three stages. There's a low temperature stage, a mid temperature stage, and a high temperature stage. And the idea is to, first of all, oxidize the graphite into graphite oxide. And the graphite oxide is easier to split apart than graphite itself. So you oxidize it, then you split it apart, uh, filter it, wash it, dry it, and that's graphite oxide. Um, you dissolve that in water, and um, it's hydrophilic, so it'll dissolve. And then you uh, get graphene oxide. You can then uh, drop cast or paint that onto something, let it dry, and you get a few layers of graphite ox graphene oxide. What you need to do then is turn that graphene oxide into graphene. And the way you do that is to reduce it. Now, there's a couple of methods I've come across to reduce it, and we'll look at that later. The first thing to do is to synthesize the graphene oxide, and that's what we're going to try and do here. Now, in the low temperature phase, you have to keep the temperature below 5 degrees. And the way to do that is a little setup like this. I'm using a celebrations tin. OK. That's um, set on top of my stirrer that I made in a previous video, and in there is 150 millilitres of concentrated sulfuric acid. You pop that in the ice bath. Drop in your stirrer rod. And turn it on. To that, you add uh, your two and a half grams of um, sodium nitrate, and five grams of your graphite. And you leave that to stir for half an hour. So in half an hour, I'll get back to you. Okay, that's been stirring for half an hour. And what you're going to do next is add 15 grams of potassium permanganate. These are the purple crystals you can get from the local chemists. Now you need to add your 15 grams over an hour. The reason for that is to keep the temperature of the reaction down. Because if you chuck it all in, it's going to get very hot. So you put a little bit in and keep stirring, and put a little bit in and keep stirring. And you do that over an hour. Now, 15 grams over an hour is not very much at all. Now, once your potassium permanganate is in there, you need to stir it for another hour. So, totally, you're going to be stirring it for two hours. Ah, I forgot to mention earlier that making this stuff uses some pretty strong acids and some pretty strong oxidizers. Sodium nitrate and potassium permanganate are pretty particularly strong oxidizers, and they use them in rocket fuel, so you need to be pretty careful with this. So it's best to do it outside, uh, because it does fume. There is an explosion hazard if you let it get above 50 degrees centigrade, so you need to um, take care to keep the temperature down at this stage. So wear glasses, wear gloves, do it outside, and really this is not an experiment for the faint of heart or the unexperienced. 
So if you're worried or unexperienced, do it. However, if you've got a bit of experience behind you and a spirit of adventure, then go for it, which is basically what we're doing here. So I'm going to turn this back on, keep it stirring for the two hours, as I said earlier, and over one hour I'm going to gradually add the uh, potassium permanganate. Okay, so this has been stirring for about two hours, and it's gone from a purple colour to this purple-green colour. So the next step is to raise the temperature of this water back to 45 degrees, and stir it for another hour at 45 degrees. Now, it's been kept pretty cold, so not a lot's actually happened in there yet, apart from mixing it. Once it's at 45 degrees, it's going to really react, so I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to take the whole thing out of the side and do it there. Now, the way to raise this temperature, given that we don't have a bath, is to mix up some hot and cold water to 45 degrees, put it on the stirrer, and every few minutes test the temperature and keep adding a little bit of hot water so that it stays at 45 degrees. Obviously, it'd be much easier if I had a water bath, but I don't, so that's what I've got to do. So I'm going to go off and do that, and uh, as I said, um, 45 degrees, and stir it for another hour. So after you've done that, it turns into this really thick paste. This brown, incidentally, along the rod there, is the graphene oxide that we're actually after. What we're going to do now is add 230 millilitres of distilled water. So, 230 millilitres of distilled water back in the water bath at 45 degrees and stir it for half an hour. Okay, so once you've done that, it turns this kind of muddy brown colour. This is pretty hopeful because that's what it's supposed to look like, apparently. So, you um, add the 230 millilitres of water to it, stir it for half an hour at 45 degrees, and it goes this muddy brown. Once you've done that, you need to kill the reaction. And you kill it by adding 600 millilitres of distilled water with 150 millilitres of the 9% hydrogen peroxide that added in. You add that in, and that's the end of the reaction. So I'm going to go and do that and show you the results. Okay, so here it is. This is after I've added the distilled water and hydrogen peroxide. It's gone this kind of greeny yellow colour. And um, this apparently is a suspension of the graphite oxide with all the other, the rest of the gubbins in there. So what I need to do now is get that out of there. The thing that I was reading said filter it, but looking at it, it's pretty gelatinous, and I don't think it's going to filter particularly easily. So what I might do is centrifuge it out and then wash it, centrifuge it and wash it. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go off and um, try that and let you know how it happens. Okay, so I centrifuged that solution that I had and uh, washed it in one molar hydrochloric acid and centrifuged it and washed it and centrifuged it and I did that three times. Now, the precipitate I got out was a kind of silvery brown with the graphene oxide and the underacted graphite so that I put it back into uh, my jam jar and added some more deionized water and gave it a stir and you can see the result. Now, this golden brown stuff is what we're actually looking for. That should be graphene oxide in solution, and it certainly looks right. At the moment I'm just leaving it to settle down because you can see this deeper black colour here. These are the larger particles, of, uh, and in there there's going to be some reactive graphite. So I'll let it settle for a while, and uh, most, of it's the, most of this is golden colour and take it away and pour it off. And then probably reduce it down. But this is looking really quite good. This is looking like it's working. So I've left this to settle most of the day, and as it's settled, I've poured off the top and thrown away the bottom bit, and so on. And what I'm left with is this uh, golden brown solution, and this is about, I think it's a 0.2 milligrams per milliliter. I had a look at the chart and compared the colours. But as you can see, it's still separating out. Um, there's this deeper brown here. And I think this deeper brown is the larger particles of the graphene flakes that are going to continue to separate out. So what I want to do is to mix it all up, really. 
So about the only way to do that is to sonicate it. Now sonicate sonicators are actually quite expensive things, so I've got to come up with some way of actually doing that, and I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do it. So I thought I'd share this with you now before I try the sonication steps so that you knew where we were. But it does look like we've got graphene oxide. Now once you've got graphene oxide, you're pretty much there, because you can bend this stuff onto um, glossy paper or plastic and let it dry. Uh, and then once you've done that, you can um, turn that into graphene. Now, there are two ways I've come across doing it. Uh, one is to pop it into um, a light scribe driver. And that will uh, laser scribe the graphite oxide into graphene. And another way is um, some guy has been reporting that if you flash it with the photo flash, it'll actually reduce it. So we've got this far. What I need to do is evaporate that down so it get a little bit more concentrated and um, see where we go from there, really, I suppose. But as I say, my next step is to um, look at the sonication and I wanted to show you where I was and where I am is um, graphene oxiding solution.